Did you know your brain, that amazing network controlling your thoughts, feelings, and reactions, isn't actually fixed? What if I told you there's an ancient practice, thousands of years old, that science now shows can help you reshape it for the better? Let's be real. We're living in a pretty wild time. Information overload, always being connected, constant pressure. Sound familiar? For a lot of us, this means our inner world is buzzing with stress. A non-stop loop of anxious thoughts or just feeling constantly distracted. It's like our minds are stuck on autopilot, replaying worries, doubting decisions, and yanking us away from what's happening right now. This isn't some personal flaw. It's often just our brains trying their best to deal with a super complex world. We're hit with so much stimuli, and our brains can get stuck in patterns of freaking out or overthinking. These patterns might have been handy for survival way back when, but in our lives today, they can seriously mess with our well-being our relationships, and our ability to just feel good. But what if this inner chaos wasn't a life sentence? What if you could gently nudge that battle towards lasting peace, not by wishing it away, but by actually training your mind? The answers, it turns out, are hidden in the incredible adaptability of our own brains. Vipassana started over 2,500 years ago in the Buddhist tradition, the pasna often gets translated as clear seeing or insight meditation. And believe me, it's way more than just a way to relax. It's a deep path of observing yourself and training your mind. At its heart, the pasna is about watching reality as it truly is. You pay super close attention to how your thoughts, feelings, and body sensations are always changing. But here's the kicker. You do it without judging, without craving the good stuff, and without pushing away the bad stuff. You just learn to sit with whatever comes up, pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral, and watch it appear and disappear. It might sound almost too simple, but that simplicity holds a powerful key to change. This isn't about emptying your mind or stopping your thoughts. It's about changing your relationship with your thoughts and emotions. It's about really understanding, from your own experience, how your inner world works. And the payoff? It's huge, the chance to literally reconfigure your brain's pathways, leading to big shifts in how you handle stress, manage your emotions, and show up in the world. For a long, long time, science mostly thought that once you were an adult, your brain was pretty much set. What you had was what you got. But over the last few decades, that idea has been totally flipped on its head, thanks to the discovery of neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is just a fancy word for your brain's amazing ability to reorganize itself, to build new connections between neurons and get rid of old ones all throughout your life. Think of it like this. Your brain is constantly learning and changing based on what you experience, what you think, and what you do. As neuroscientist Sarah Lazar says, the brain is plastic. This means neurons can actually change how they talk to each other based on our actions. Just like hitting the gym can change your muscles, mental training, like the Pasna meditation, can reshape your brain. If you keep practicing a particular mental skill, the parts of your brain and the neural circuits involved get stronger and more efficient. So if you practice focusing your attention, your brain will actually restructure itself to make it easier to concentrate. If you practice watching your emotions without flipping out, you'll build a brain that's more resilient to stress. So Vipassana isn't just sitting there passively. It's an active mental workout that uses this incredible neuroplasticity to make positive changes from the inside out. So what's actually happening inside your head when you practice Vipassana? Thanks to some pretty cool brain scanning tech like MRI, scientists can now peek inside the meditating brain and see some truly remarkable changes. And these aren't just quick mood boosts. We're talking actual measurable changes in brain structure and function. First up, the hippocampus. This little seahorse-shaped part deep in your brain is crucial for learning, making memories, and it also has a big say in how we regulate our emotions. Study after study shows that people who meditate regularly tend to have increased gray matter volume in the hippocampus. Why does this matter? Well, a smaller or less active hippocampus is often linked to things like depression and PTSD. 
So by beefing up the hippocampus, Vipassana might just make us better at learning healthier emotional responses and boost our overall psychological strength. Next, let's talk about the amygdala, often called the brain's fear center or alarm system. The amygdala is key for processing emotions like fear and anxiety and kicking off that fight or flight response. Super important for survival, right? But an overactive amygdala can lead to chronic stress and make us emotionally jumpy. And here's where it gets really interesting. Vipassana meditation has been shown to calm down activity in the amygdala. Even more impressively, studies have actually found a decrease in the gray matter density of the amygdala in meditators, and this shrinkage lines up with them reporting less stress. Imagine being able to turn down the volume on your internal alarm, letting you handle tough situations with more calm and clarity. Recent research using super-sensitive recordings from inside the brain has even confirmed that meditation directly changes amygdala activity, calming this emotional hub. Then there's the prefrontal cortex, PFC, the part of your brain right behind your forehead. The PFC is like the CEO of your brain. It handles the big stuff like decision-making, planning, working memory, attention, and self-awareness. It's what helps us control our impulses and make conscious choices. Practicing the pasna seems to strengthen and boost the PFC. Long-term meditators often show increased gamma wave activity here, which is linked to sophisticated thinking and heightened awareness. This stronger PFC is probably why meditators often say they can focus better, make smarter decisions, and feel more in control of their reactions instead of being driven by them. But the brain makeover doesn't stop there. More gray matter has also been spotted in the temporoparietal junction, an area above your ear that's all about seeing things from other people's perspectives, empathy, and compassion. Qualities that meditators often say get a serious boost from their practice. On top of that, research shows changes in other important brain areas like the anterior cingulate cortex, involved in attention and self-regulation, the insular cortex, key for feeling your internal bodily states or interoception, and the thalamus, a kind of relay station for sensory info. All these changes suggest that sticking with meditation leads to widespread brain adaptations that sharpen your focus and give you a richer, more detailed awareness of your senses. It's like a complete upgrade for the very hardware of your consciousness. It's not just the brain's structure that changes. The Pasna meditation also has a profound effect on the brain's electrical activity, its brain waves. These rhythmic patterns show us different states of consciousness and mental activity. And scientists have found that meditation significantly changes these brainwave patterns, often in ways that are really good for our mental well-being. For example, beta and gamma waves, which can be out of whack in mood disorders like depression and anxiety, show noticeable changes in their strength and how long they last during practices like loving-kindness meditation, which often goes hand-in-hand -hand with vipassana. This hints that meditation can help get brainwave activity linked to emotional distress back on track. Another really cool finding is an increase in something called brainwave entropy, especially in the alpha and gamma frequency bands during meditation. Now, higher entropy might sound like total chaos, but in this case, it actually means the brain is in a more flexible, adaptable, and dynamic state. This increased complexity in brain activity could be what allows for those deeper states of consciousness and insight that meditators often talk about. It's like the brain becomes more fluid, able to explore a wider range of how it can operate. What's more, experienced Vipassana meditators have been shown to have reduced midfrontal theta activity when they're doing tasks that require them to stop themselves from making an automatic response. And get this, they actually perform better on these tasks using less brain effort. This points to their brains becoming more efficient. They can do the same job, or even a better one, with less energy. It's like upgrading your car's engine to be both more powerful and more fuel efficient. These shifts in brainwave activity give us yet another layer of proof for the amazing rewiring power of Vipassana meditation. Okay, the brain scans and all the neurotalk are fascinating. But what does this rewiring actually mean for your everyday life? Well, 
The changes happening in brain structure and function translate into a whole bunch of real-world psychological benefits that can seriously improve your quality of life. One of the most well-known benefits is stress reduction. Vipassana meditation gives you powerful tools to fight the stress that's pretty much everywhere these days. Regular practice helps manage your body's stress hormone, cortisol, helping you bounce back to a state of balance more quickly after something stressful happens. It also helps chill out the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal, HPA axis. That's your body's main stress response system, making it less reactive. Beyond hormones, meditation has even been linked to lower levels of inflammatory markers in the body, like C-reactive protein and interleukin-6, which are tied to chronic stress-related illnesses. This anti-inflammatory effect might happen through the vagus nerve, suggesting a deep link between your mind, brain, and immune system. Then there's the super important area of emotional regulation. The Pasna teaches you to observe your emotions without getting totally carried away by them. This practice helps stop those negative thought loops and cuts down on rumination. You know, when you get stuck replaying stressful thoughts or worries over and over. By creating a bit of space between an emotional trigger and your response, you get the power to choose how you react. Research has connected regular meditation with lower levels of anxiety and depression, with some studies even suggesting its effects can be similar to psychotherapy or even antidepressant medication, but without the side effects. One really insightful study found that after an eight-week mindfulness-based course, which shares core ideas with Vipassana, people actually paid more attention to negative self-talk. But, weirdly enough, they had less activation in their amygdala and reported feeling less anxious and worried. This suggests they weren't just squashing down negative thoughts, but were learning to acknowledge them without being overwhelmed by them, which is a key sign of real emotional resilience. Beyond stress and emotions, the pasna also brings some serious cognitive enhancements. The practice strengthens your prefrontal cortex, which, as we talked about, is vital for focus, decision-making, and memory. Studies have shown that meditators have fewer mind-wandering episodes, that super common thing where our attention just floats away from what we're doing. This means better focus, more productivity, and a greater ability to stay present with whatever you're up to. Groundbreaking research by neuroscientists Antoine Lutz and Richard Davidson showed that intensive Vipassana meditation could reduce the attentional blink the attentional blink is when, if you see two images flashed quickly, one after the other, you often miss the second one. Meditators showed a smaller attentional blink, meaning they had better sustained attention and more efficient brain processing. Basically, meditation helps you see more of what's going on, both out in the world and inside your own mind. Hearing about all these incredible changes might have you wondering, so, how much practice does it actually take to start rewiring your brain? The great news is, you don't necessarily have to spend decades in a silent retreat to feel the benefits. Though, obviously, the longer you practice, the deeper they go. Scientific research suggests that you can see measurable changes in brain structure with a pretty modest commitment. For instance, neuroscientist Sarah Lazar's pioneering research discovered that an eight-week meditation program with about 30 to 40 minutes of daily practice was enough to show significant changes in brain areas like the hippocampus and amygdala. That's super encouraging for anyone new to this. Some studies have even shown that first-time meditators can show changes in brainwave activity in areas like the amygdala and hippocampus during their very first guided meditation sessions. While these initial changes might be more temporary, they show that the brain starts responding to meditation pretty much right away. Of course, it seems like the effects of meditation are dose-dependent. What that means is, generally, the more consistent and long-term your practice, the more significant the changes in your brain's structure and function are likely to be. Long-term practitioners often show the biggest changes, which really highlights the power of sticking with it. As author Kelly McGonigal puts it, totally echoing neuroplasticity. If you practice focusing on your breath, the brain will restructure itself to make concentration easier. If you practice calm acceptance during meditation, you will develop a brain more resilient to stress, 
and if you meditate while cultivating feelings of love and compassion, your brain will develop in a way that makes you feel more connected to others. The key is consistency. Even short, regular sessions are often more effective than long ones here and there. It's about steadily training your mind, giving your brain the time it needs to adapt and rewire. Pretty compelling stuff, isn't it? The science is solid. The Pasna is a journey of profound self-discovery and real, tangible transformation. If the idea of consciously reshaping your brain for more calm, clarity, and compassion sounds good to you, maybe it's time to check out this ancient practice. There are tons of resources out there, from beginner books and apps to guided courses and retreats. The path to a rewired brain doesn't start with a giant leap, but with a single, mindful breath. If this dive into the science behind Vipassana got you thinking, please give this video a thumbs up. And hey, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell for more explorations into brain science, well-being, and the incredible potential of your own mind. So what's the big takeaway? The ancient wisdom of Vipassana and the latest discoveries in neuroscience are telling us the same amazing story. We are not just stuck with the brain we're born with, passively taking orders from it. We have way more power to shape our inner world than we probably ever imagined. Through dedicated practice, Vipassana meditation offers a scientifically backed way to literally rewire our brains, to dial down stress, get a better handle on our emotions, sharpen our focus, and build a deeper sense of well-being and connection. This isn't just about feeling a bit better. It's about fundamentally changing the very organ that perceives and experiences life.